Madam Vice President, thank you for doing this interview with the Associated Press. Of course, it's good to be with you. So we're in Jakarta for a regional summit, but uh, before we start with that, I wanted to talk about a little bit of news elsewhere. Okay. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin is reportedly planning to meet with North Korea's Kim Jong-un uh, to acquire weapons. W what do you make of this, and what do you think that says about the state of the war in Ukraine right now? Last year, as you know, actually earlier this year, I was on the stage at the Munich Security Conference and I declared on behalf of the United States of America that Russia has committed crimes against humanity. The idea that any nation would give ammunition to a country that has committed crimes against humanity, what it might mean in terms of how that ammunition could be used in terms of grain silos, um, and the list goes on. So it is not only ill-advised, it, it, I'm concerned about it. We are concerned about it. Um, but, you know, here's the bottom line. Russia has been um, levied a strategic failure. Uh, President Biden yourself took office in the wake of the January 6th attack. Uh, looking at forward to the election year, are you worried about the prospect of more political violence going forward? I hope and pray there will be no more political violence. And... Um, I am glad to see that um, the American people and our system of democracy and rule of law are holding people accountable who attempt, attempted to upend the democratic process and the election of the President of the United States. And I am also concerned that there are people, so-called leaders, extremists around our country who are engaged in a full-on attack against our democracy. I'm very concerned about that. You mentioned holding people accountable. Obviously, a big issue right now is the indictments against President Trump. Is that part of what you mean about holding people accountable for January 6th? Well, as you know, I spent the majority of my career as a prosecutor. I believe that people should be held accountable under the law. And when they break the law, there should be accountability. Mm -hmm. and, does that and I support it when it happens. Mm -hmm. And does that extend to the former president? Well, everyone has their right to their day in court. Mm -hmm. But, at, but absolutely, people should be held accountable, but under our system of law, right? Let the av evidence and facts take it where um, it may. Mm -hmm. uh, one issue for voters in the upcoming election is President Biden's age. An AP poll recently showed that 77% of Americans and 69% of Democrats uh, believe he's too old for a second term. Uh, do you think he's ready to serve as president until he's 86? And somebody who works with him, you know, have you seen changes in recent years? First of all, let me say that our president has been an extraordinary leader who has accomplished things that previous presidents hoped and dreamed and promised they would do and did not achieve. So yes, I see him every day. A substantial amount of time we spend together is in the Oval Office where I see how his ability to understand issues and weave through complex issues in a way that no one else can to make smart and important decisions on behalf of the American people have played out. And so I will say to you that I think the American people ultimately want to know that their president delivers and Joe Biden delivers. Uh, questions about the president's age often go hand in hand with questions about how you would step in the role, you know, if necessary. Do you feel prepared for that possibility? Uh, and serving as vice president prepared you for, for that job? Yes. Um, and how would you, you know, describe the, that, that process? Which process? Like as far as, you know, being ready for that, uh, for that. Well, first of all, let's, the, I'm answering your hypothetical. Mm -hmm. um, but Joe Biden's going to be fine. Right. So that is not going to come to fruition. But let us also understand that every vice president, every vice president, understands that when they take the oath, that they must be very clear about the responsibility they may have to take over the job of being president. I am no different. Uh, let's talk about the reason why we're here in Jakarta for the summit of the uh, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Uh, this is your third trip to Southeast Asia. Uh, why is this region so critical to U.S. interests and kind of the future of U.S. foreign policy in the Indo-Pacific? I feel very strongly about um, the importance as a general matter of engaging in U.S. policy as it relates to foreign affairs in a way that we pay attention, of course, to the immediate concerns and threats if they exist, but that we also pay attention to 10, 20, 30 years down the line and what we are developing now that will be to the benefit of our country then. When I think about 
Southeast Asia and this region in the Indo-Pacific. First of all, Southeast Asia, you're looking at a population of over 600 million people, at least two-thirds of which are under the age of 35. Think about what that means, especially when you look at so many of these countries that have thriving economies. Think about what it means when you look at the fact that at least one quarter of U.S. exports come to this region. Think about it when you think about what we're talking about in terms of the South China Sea. And at least a third of trade travels through shipping through that channel. And so we as Americans, I believe, have a very significant interest, both in terms of our security but also our prosperity, today and in the future, in developing and strengthening these relationships.